By the late 1980s, Edgar Bronfman Sr. had been at the helm of Seagram for two decades. He'd been a worthy custodian of the Canadian liquor empire his father had created. Now, he was thinking about handing it on to the next generation. But Edgar Jr. had little interest in the liquor business. From the beginning, Jr. rebelled against much of what his family stood for. One form his rebellion took, I think, against his father and the expectations placed on him was not to go to college at all. He didn't think of himself growing up as a businessman. He really didn't reject it, but he wasn't sure he wanted to be a part of it. And instead, he indulged this more creative, artistic side of him. Entertainment, not the liquor business, was Edgar Jr.'s first love. He left prep school to work in movies. He went off in a summer as a teenager and met the, the wonderful producer David Putnam. David who made Chariots of Fire and Gandhi and all of that and really got a start in the entertainment business through David in London. Back in the United States, young Edgar Jr. produced a film called The Border with Jack Nicholson. But music, even more than film, became his true passion. He probably had the most success as a writer of song lyrics. He had partnership mostly with a man named David Foster, who had some commercial success with people like Celine Dion, Dionne Warwick. But meanwhile, the whole time, his father is exerting pressure on him to be a Bronfman and come in to the business and learn how to run it. Even in his relationships, Edgar Jr. rebelled. Instead of marrying a nice Jewish girl as expected, he married a beautiful black actress named Sherry Brewer. When that marriage failed, he married a Catholic, Clarissa Alcock. It wasn't until he was about 30 or so that he started to submit to the, to the family pressure to join the family business. When Junior joined Seagram, whiskey's popularity was still declining. But cognac was booming, especially in Japan and China. So in the late 80s, Junior and his dad spent 900